welcome to the pod. Um, welcome to the show. Um, Good to be Lee, here. Uh, Lee is a neighbor of mine in Palo Alto, so great to see you. <laughs> nice also, see you. you used to work at VMware, so we're going to try to get you to talk Thank about uh, all the dirty stuff going on <laughs> and the good <laughs> secrets that uh, uh, they won't tell us about. And uh, Scott Dedson, the uh, uh, famous entrepreneur, you've done a bunch of startups, now Pure Storage, heavily funded. Heavily funded. <laughs> well, heavily funded is a relative term, right, depending on how you look at the world Hardware's these days. Hardware is expensive. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Welcome to the startup panel. So we're going to jump right in. So we had originally on the schedule uh, more stuff, but our desk is a little bit short. So we're going to just roll through two at a time. So for, thanks for coming. So the first question, we'll go right down the line. Um, what's going on in the marketplace right now with startups? Okay, obviously last year at VMworld, we had a startup panel, uh, I mean a VC panel. We didn't have a startup panel. There wasn't a lot of startups that were kind of at a, a level where good funding environment, customer acquisition was going. What's it like today out there? I, I think the opportunity for startups um, in Silicon Valley today is outstanding. The breadth of innovation that I see um, is, is more than I think I've seen in my 20 years in the Valley. And I, I think so much is up in the air, right? Uh, we've got cloud computing, we've got mobile, we've got uh, open source, we've got changes to the storage landscape with solid state technologies. You put all this together, there's just lots of disruptors that um, entrepreneurs can jump on. Yeah, we heard the uh, the super geeks earlier, Amr Abadala, super respected in the PhD in, in basically virtualization, that whole world, and, and the VMware guy talking about system software. I mean, you know, you look at the, the legendary company like Hewlett Packard, who I, you know, disclosure, I worked there for nine years back in the, the good old days when it was Hewlett Packard. Um, they're like struggling in this whole, what do we do with the PC division and uh, you know autonomy, land grabbing. It's like they're groping to get to the future, right? And that's going on. Those are big companies, yet a whole nother inflection point's going on in another part of the, the tech business, which is emerging and like a thermal of growth. Um, Amr talked about SSD and storage layer, talking about essentially system software with the cloud. What's going on? Lee, you've been around the block. Start us off on this. Come on, help us. I've, help I've, us digest <laughs> the chaos. I think it's been interesting just to see how storage has emerged as such a key part of the critical infrastructure. You know, storage for many, many years was just a sleepy kind of back end, you know, you know, I care about servers. Boring, storage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I care, you know, what's that? What's sexy? Well, the applications are sexy, right? I mean, that's where you really want to spend your time. Well, storage was just kind of, you know, that's how I boot from, you know, to get started. Well. In the last you know, four or five years, I think what we've seen is that storage is becoming a key innovation, a key differentiator for companies. The valuations, even while startups have struggled a little bit in an economic uh, time, the valuations for storage companies have been phenomenal. Companies like Equalogic, Compellent, Data Domain. I mean, you keep going and watching. So, And then you're starting to see companies like VMware enter the mix. The VSA product, for example, right, is bringing a whole new set of innovation. EMC with Project Lightning. These are in, uh, these are initiatives that are showing that storage can be a critical differentiator for your company. Well, Project Lightning, is that like a real project or is that like an announcement? <laughs> I mean, seriously, <laughs> EMC <laughs> is like a big, huge, they're one of the incumbents. They're the market leader okay, and, and, and they own the customer. So, Obviously, they're saying, okay, we got to go there. So obviously, Project yeah. Lightning is a commitment. Um, and so startups want to nip at the heels of the big guys. So how do you guys do that in this market? And, and obviously, this is a valuation issue. So there's some, some funding going on, but there's a real opportunity. Uh, Scott, you know, you've been this in the place before as, a, as an entrepreneur. You go out and you get a market and you want to get a position and grow it and differentiate. So how does startups compete and how are you planning on competing? I mean, Pure in particular, your product line, I mean, that's going right at BEMC and you want to go in there, so how are you going to do that? Well, nipping at the heels is definitely the wrong approach as an entrepreneur. You, you've got to get <laughs> out in front of uh, the big guys with something that's revolutionary. And you know, the way we're trying to change the game is to make Flash affordable. Um, you know, everybody loves the performance and the, the um, green qualities of Flash. It's power and space efficiency. It's just too expensive. You know, if you buy Flash from the market leaders, you're paying typically north of $50 per gig um, and we're getting in under five, right? So that 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 transformation um, can definitely change the landscape. So differentiation is on changing the game, not trying to run at their pace, kind of throw them off, off, off pace, you're saying? Kind of throw them off, off, off balance? I, I, you know, I would say you want to focus on a market disruption as an entrepreneur, right? So you need to do something uh, and it can't be two or three X better than an incumbent because that's not enough to carve out some real estate. You've got to do something 10X better than the incumbent, and if you do that well, 
then you've got the shot. All right, well let's talk about that. Customer acquisition, Lee, you and I were talking on the phone prior uh, to VMworld. Um, you, you've been around the block and you've seen storage become storage to storage is sexy, to storage is now a storage is now a real enabler and totally integrated into the package with SSDs and flash. Right. So, so you got a lot of customers. So what are they saying to you and how are you going to grow your customer base? Is it going to be direct sales? And, and same question for, yeah, you know, for Scott. So I think Scott's got a really good point about just the disruption element that you have. In our case, what we did is decided that instead of treating storage as storage only, we would treat storage and virtual servers together as a common platform. We have scale out storage along with embedded virtual servers. That converged infrastructure that we brought, we have over 500 customers today running converged infrastructure in a market where it's, it's the video surveillance market and they don't even know that they're running converged infrastructure. These are ex-police department cops. So you solution, it, you packaged up in a solution. We packaged it up it. and what they wanted was they wanted the value of saying, I've got a green play, I've got a management, I've got a higher availability, and I've got a whole economic play by having all this in a converged sense. We're now bringing that to the virtual desktop space. Once again, having a common platform by bringing servers and storage together, distinctly different than anybody else. We, we look at Cisco bringing virtualization into switches, that's UCS or VCE, right? Yeah. You've got VMware obviously bringing more virtualization features into the servers. Uh, we don't see anybody else bringing virtualization into the storage element, that's distinctly different. And so you're a little bit more further along than pure storage is on the startup cycle. So you guys are out there growing. Um, Scott, you're out there, you got some money, you got some technology differentiation. Um, how are you going to out muscle EMC, for example? They're a huge sales force. <laughs> they got relationships with their customers. They're golfing, they're going to the Caribbean, all the stuff <laughs> that EMC does effectively really well. And you're a startup. Do you change the game on the on the customer acquisition side? Do you go indirect? Do you go, I mean, what, what do you do? I mean, you got to, these are big decisions. <laughs> Uh, they are indeed, and, and again, if you're trying to outmuscle the big guys, you, 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 you've got really no chance of success. Sure. Uh, but what we're showing in our booth uh, here at VMworld, we've got a 64 gigabyte LUN on vSphere 5. You can now make these large LUNs. We've got a thousand VMs running inside that single LUN, and everything is performing sub millisecond onto and off of the array. If you were going to try to do, and, and this, you know, this fits in for you, that's, that's the storage footprint. If, if you tried to do that with conventional disk, you would have to have a much larger deployment. So build a better mousetrap um, and you've got a real shot, right? As long as you're, if you've got a 10X better mousetrap uh, and then, you know, then you've got to still mix it up on the business side. Uh, we are looking to leverage partners and so on to, to hopefully have success. Okay, so we're going to swap out, but I want to ask one final question. Okay, so um, quickly talk about what you're doing here at VMware, particularly to your startups, because obviously it's important, ecosystem, and they're promoted. Last year they said $15 for every dollar spent will go to the ecosystem. We're going to ask Todd Nielsen that if that happened this year, so we're going to get the data on that. But so talk about one, your role here and how that's going to really propel and help customers, and two, what other startups can do to, to either get into this ecosystem or this marketplace and, and what they should work on and how they should focus on. So we'll start with Scott. Um, so, you know, in terms of startups getting VMware excited, I mean, you, you need to look at things that um, VMware customers are trying to accomplish, like virtualizing performance critical workloads, like Oracle, uh, for example, or doing large scale VDI. Those are two other things we're demonstrating um, in, in our booth. Um, you know, we, we found as long as you can deliver that uh, compelling value proposition to the to the VMware user, you can you can generate a bunch of excitement. But you know that's the right way to get VMware excited is to go straight to the customer and do something that you know their customers can't do today with the conventional technologies. Okay, Lee, and yeah. your, your your take on this because you worked at VMware. Well, we find the same thing, right? Is that you know companies, uh, the bigger companies, get consumed by maintenance. This is the hard part, right? I mean, you go and you launch something new, VMware 5.0. Right now, you got a you got all the maintenance, all the transition paths. Uh, you really look to startup companies to go provide something that just can't be done outside. And so that's how you acquire customers. And once you acquire customers, then you become interesting for a whole lot of reasons. Okay, I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE.com. We are at the startup spotlight here with uh, two senior entrepreneurs who've been around the block. They know what they're doing. You heard the message. Get out there, deliver value to customers. And you can do it. You can change the game on the big guys. Don't try to go head-to-head -head with the incumbents. Change the game. Take advantage of this inflection. Guys, thanks for coming.